Thanks for joining me as I travel the world, going from fine dining through to street food and local specialties, all in an effort to find the world's best seafood. Today we're in Midtown East Manhattan. Amongst the brownstone buildings might be the last place you'd expect to find a truly traditional Japanese restaurant. Yamada Chikara just opened this year and it's his first branch outside of Japan. The wall of sakis and the woman in the traditional kimono give you an idea that you're going to try something truly traditional. It's quite a Zen setting. The only things on display are minimal decorations and a whole bunch of fresh vegetables. This is a sample menu, not exactly what we had on the day. We started off with a, their take on a martini and olive. The olive was actually a gel inside a gelatinous mold with an intense olive flavor. And then it's a rose water and sake martini, a really nice light way to start the meal. Now we're having the kushiagi omakase set. Kushiagi is a traditional Japanese cuisine like sushi or teppanyaki or tempura, but it's skewers that have been deep fried. It has a long history, but I don't know of any other traditional places in Manhattan serving this. And omakase just means chef's choice. So we're going to have a series of different skewers and I'm having the paired wines and sake. We start off with champagne, but then it's a flight of different drinks. Yeah, a lot of them are Japanese sakis, but as the chef actually trained at the famous El Bulay in Spain, a lot of the dishes have a small Spanish influence and a lot of the wines were from Spain as well. The meal started off with the hostess bringing four different dipping sauces. The first was a heavier one for meats that I think was a blend of oyster sauce and Worcestershire sauce. The second was their take on tartar sauce. The third was a citrus soy sauce. And the final one was a spicy yuzu, which is another type of citrus with English salt. The first course was a, just a tray full of lightly blanched vegetables that you could dip and eat throughout the whole meal and they'd replenish if you finished it. Then the skewers started coming out and I have to say this restaurant is really like just stepping into a portal and suddenly being in Japan. It has nods that are kind of show that it's 2018, but it really feels just like a fine dining restaurant in Japan. They're not adding in cool stuff just for the sake of being cool, only if it really adds to the dish. The first skewer we got was shrimp, and I don't think I've ever had a shrimp that perfectly cooked. It was light and almost crisp in texture, sourced somewhere from Southeast Asia, but not Japan and perfectly cooked. I don't know how they do it exactly, but everything hits the plate ready to eat, just like at a good sushi bar at the right temperature, perfectly cooked inside and out, and never a single drop of oil remaining on it. Next was a mochi rice cake, really delicious, just very simple and tender. Next up was a tenderloin of beef, and who would have thought that a tiny piece of beef on a skewer crumbed and deep fried could be so good. Again, perfectly cooked and still pink in the middle. And this came with its own yuzu flavored sauce, especially for the beef. Next is truffle on truffle on eggs. So this is a pair of quail eggs, again, perfectly cooked and still kind of soft in the middle with a slice of black truffle and a little dropper of truffle oil to put on top. This chef is famous in Japan for his use of the little droppers to apply your own sauce. As you can see with the next dish, which was tomato, mozzarella, and then basil in an eyedropper. Now, I'm actually not really a fan of deep fried food, and the idea of having a series of skewers that have all been deep fried sounds too much, to be honest. But it's all so light, it really doesn't taste deep fried. I was amazed to find out they use sesame oil. My idea of quality sesame oil is a dark brown color with a really fragrant note to it. But they explained that that actually comes from the roasting of the sesame shell. The most pure sesame oil extracted at high pressure from the center of the kernel is completely clear and completely fragranceless, and that's what they use. At the whole place, they were deep frying in front of us, we couldn't smell oil or definitely no sesame at all. Next up was a whitefish, I think sable fish, rolled up with seaweed, and then fish eggs. I've had this type before in sushi before, and I was amazed. I actually prefer it cooked like this. It took on a really creamy texture, 
and the flavour seemed enhanced by this style of cooking. Next up is Gorgonzola Apple and Honey. I'm not actually a fan of Gorgonzola, but this balanced really nicely and the honey was quite mild but went nicely with the crispness of the apple and the kind of sour note of the cheese. Next up, a homemade tofu made from sesame with caviar and more wine and more wine, always more wine. You can't have too much wine. Then sea urchin, this one's in a soba powder. You can see it's a different kind of batter on it with seaweed. Now I'm a huge fan of sea urchin or uni. This was still really moist and fluffy on the middle, but I think I actually prefer sea urchin completely raw. Next up was a small piece of salmon, Kyoto style, served with pickled vegetables on top. Again, slightly pink in the middle. At this point, they offered if we'd like to add anything to the omakase, so I had another piece of the shrimp. It then comes with a small chirashi sushi. Chirashi just means over rice, so mix this uh, sushi fish over sushi rice in a bowl that you can eat with the chopsticks directly with the little garnishes on the side. And then it actually comes with a trio of desserts. It's a rotating menu. Each month they seem to have different things on depending on what's seasonal. And a highlight, the meal includes a tea. And you can either have just any kind of tea or they have a hostess actually does the full Japanese matcha tea ceremony. So using the green tea powder, the traditional way of boiling the water and the bamboo brush, she performed the whole ritual, frothed it up and served us the tea. And it's really quite special, let alone America. I don't think even in Japan, I've had a restaurant where they did the tea ceremony in front of you in the restaurant. So whilst this meal did have truffle and eyedroppers and that kind of thing, which are very 2018. This restaurant is, I think, just a slice of Japan moved over to New York City. I haven't been to any other restaurant that was so traditional. I think the only challenge they're going to face is we're all so accustomed to sushi and teppanyaki and Japanese steak as cuisines that at a fine dining restaurant command a high price. But kushiyagi is much less common outside of Japan, so fewer people have heard of it. For a meal that consisted mostly of deep fried items, I left feeling like I'd had a light and healthy meal, which is really surprising. Really delicious, worth checking out, but it does command a premium. The omakase set is around $180 per person. That does include the tip though. They don't uh, accept tips in the traditional Japanese fashion. Please do like and subscribe for your seat at the table as I continue my search for the world's best seafood.